Hi, I'm Ernest Young, and today I want to talk about financial difference methods with CUDA C, C++ for GPU, GPU, because we saw inviscid, non-viscous compressible fluid flow. Um, and I was interested in finding difference methods because I wanted to model the gas phase in between the uh, combustion chamber of a uh, liquid propellant rocket engine out to the nozzle. And um, to model it, we will consider it as uh, compressible fluid flow. Uh, that's inviscid. This is a good approximation for high Reynolds number or high velocities. And I wanted to take advantage of the uh, parallel processing power of the G GPU uh, using CUDA C, C++ as the language. Here's a video of the GPU that I use, my GE Force GTX 980Ti from NVIDIA using a CUDA C script that I wrote, uh, QuerryB.cu, which is available on my GitHub, uh, I can print out directly uh, some information off, off directly off the device GPU. So for example, the clock rate is, I believe, one megahertz, and that clock rate is for each of the processors, and there are about uh, 2,000 CUDA cores on the um, uh, device GPU. Uh, so that so that'll be the clock rate for the CUDA cores. The total global memory is six gigabytes. That's uh, good to know as an estimate of the maximum bound for the size of the arrays that we can launch on um, the device CPU. Uh, there's a uh, total constant memory and six uh, six five kilobytes, and that's um, good to know for how much we can store of uh, physical parameters that we'll be using a lot. Um, in our uh, kernel functions. Uh, it's also good to know the maximum threads for block, which is uh, 1024 to 1024, because uh, in parallel processing, each of the threads uh, compute out a piece of the job, and each of the threads uh, can um, the threads can be arranged into blocks of threads uh, on the device uh, GPU memory. Uh, the blocks can be modeled as one, two, or three dimensions. So, for example, in a three-dimensional case, a block can have, uh, you know, a number of threads in one direction, x, y, or z direction. So, the number of threads in the x direction times the number of threads in the y direction times the number of threads in the z direction must equal to a number uh, equal to or less than 1024, which is dictated by the architecture of the GPU. So I began by trying to look up on searching on GitHub or on Google search or some search engine for implementations previously of finite volume and finite difference methods. So I didn't find anything that both implemented in CUDA C and C++ of um, compressible uh, fluid flow. Uh, I think I saw something from OpenFoam with Rapid CFD for incompressible fluid flow, but please let me know. Um, otherwise, uh, as a base case, I wanted to implement the uh, upwind method for uh, wind dimensions. So I wanted to implement uh, mass conservation. That will tell us how uh, convection will occur under mass conservation. And for the upwind method, it really boils down to two equations down below. So if you consider a one cubic simplex or a line segment in this one dimensional case and then its surface, which are those two um, endpoints of the line segment. Uh, there's a right endpoint and a left endpoint, and uh, which I'll label as I plus one and I minus one. The upwind method really boils down to the two equations below. So for all the surfaces, you want to consider the velocity, whether it's positive or negative. So for example, for the right endpoint, for I plus one or I plus one, if the velocity is positive, then you know that mass is flowing out of this uh, I line segment out through this uh, surface. Uh, so the mass flux is uh, directly related to the um, mass density uh, in the I uh, line segment. If at I plus one the uh, velocity is negative, then um, mass is flowing in from the I plus one cell. So the mass flux through this endpoint is directly related to the mass density of uh, the 
I plus one cell, and likewise for the uh, left endpoint. This case, uh, this method is easily generalized to the three-dimensional case, uh, and then for you know um, how for for three-dimensional uh, cubic cells. Uh, what I do want to note that uh, along with the fact that you want to take the normal component of the velocity at the surfaces that you're interested or the faces of this cube. Uh, not only that, uh, and hence the two equations down below that informs us of how to write the algorithm. On top of that, I want to emphasize that if you really think about it, R1, R2, R3, uh, Euclidean 1, 2, and 3 spaces are examples of smooth manifolds from differential geometry. So starting from physical principles uh, that are really defined Navier-Stokes, which are mass conservation for one species or for multiple species, uh, this can be easily done, um, F equals MA, and energy conservation, from those three principles, you can re-derive Navier-Stokes equations for uh, that will work on any smooth manifold, not just R1, R2, R3. Uh, and I did that, and I re-obtained the integral and differential forms uh, for R1, R2, R3, uh, but starting from differential geometry. Uh, and then hence, uh, these symbols for the interior derivative, with this I, with the subscript uh, U, and uh, this volume VOL with uh, superscript uh, 1, 2, or 3 for the dimension, for the volume form. Uh, I do this not only for theoretical elegance and for notational ele elegance, but I wanted to open up opportunities to, uh, on the theory side, to explore open questions and fluid mechanics, uh, in particular compressible uh, fluid flow. On the numerical computational side, I as a practical matter, uh, it informs us, I, I sincerely believe, it informs us on how best to uh, factor our code and to write C++ classes. So here I want to present um, OpenGL uh, bitmap uh, animations of one-dimensional and three-dimensional convection uh, use, that is uh, due to mass conservation using this upwind uh, method. Um, and I, I want to say that I, I use OpenGL, um, and it's um, it's a pointer that points to a place in the bitmap. It's CUDA C C++ provides um, a function that links it with uh, the directly to a pointer on CUDA C C++ on the device GPU. Uh, another thing I want to emphasize is that this is completely rendered on the device GPU. The CPU is not used at all in uh, rendering this animation in real time. So here it is for the one-dimensional case of if mass was distributed out as a Gaussian, uh, and then and I had a uniform uh, velocity vector field uh, moving to the right, then this would be uh, one-dimensional convection uh, due to this upwind method. Uh, and the y direction here in this case uh, is, is the value of the mass density, that rho. Uh, here it is um, for the three-dimensional case. Um, and what I want to emphasize for this three-dimensional case is that this is completely done um, on the device GPU. Now for uh, bitmaps, they're inherently two-dimensional. So you're seeing a two-dimensional slice of this three-dimensional grid block. And in this case, it's a uh, 1920 times 1920 uh, times 32 uh, three-dimensional size grid block. And we're seeing just uh, a half of that. So what we would see is this uh, Gaussian uh, mass distribution, mass density distribution shrink because uh, I've used a uniform velocity vector field of 25 meters per second uh, to the right, uh, 25 meters per second to up, and then 12 meters per second um, in the z direction. So we're going to see this uh, Gaussian mass distribution shrink uh, in two dimensions. But I want to emphasize this is all happening in three dimensions, and CUDA C, C++ is uh, computing out on each of those uh, cell faces 
uh, you know, of size 1920 times 1920 times 32. And here we see it disappear again, disappear away. Finite difference, the method for a finite difference really boils down to approximating derivatives with um, successive orders of Taylor, uh, Taylor series expansion. There's nothing else to it. So for example, for df uh, dx, that derivative, uh, we can approximate it. So if we're interested in the value of the derivative of f at uh, the point x, then we want to look at, you know, to the right of it and to the left of it for the so-called central difference operator. Uh, and then we, for successive uh, orders of, um, uh, of uh, degrees of accuracy or lowering the error, we want to look at more and more points to the right of, adjacent to the right and to the left of x. Uh, so that's why you have that new that runs from one to uh, big N. Uh, so that so when people say you know I have a finite difference uh, of stencil size one, for instance, then you're looking at uh, the value of f uh, at x plus h uh, and x minus h, h being the distance between uh, grid points. Uh, if you want a stencil size of 2, then you will look at x uh, plus h and x plus 2h, uh, the value of f at those points, and x minus uh, h and x minus 2h. Um, and then plug it into this uh, formula. That c nu is something you have to compute. Uh, and for, uh, you know, and that depends on your stencil size. So c nu changes for stencil size. I've written a Python script and accompanying Jupyter notebook uh, that does this for any order p that you want. So for any stencil size p uh, equal, um, and you know you could do that for whatever stencil size uh, you're interested in. Uh, that's in finite diff dot ip uh, y and b, and it's in my GitHub repositories. Uh, you can also uh, compute out these coefficients for the double derivative and then find, uh, you know, the finite difference approximation to the double derivative to, uh, of whatever uh, accuracy you want. Uh, so, for instance, for stencil size uh, 2, so you, um, you get a OH2, a, um, you know, it's, this approximation is good up to, uh, big O H2. So if you take H uh, small enough, then the error in your uh, approximation of uh, the double derivative uh, is H squared. So if you take H small enough, you know, uh, you can get it to a good enough accuracy. So these C news, these coefficients uh, that are required for doing finite difference approximations of derivatives are stored in the constant memory of uh, the device GPU. And then what I found in practice is that uh, doing this shaves off about low to mid single digit uh, percentage of time uh, uh, every time I do a kernel function uh, run. So I'll talk about discretization and the whole software engineering framework that I want to inculcate. Which is this, which is, again, uh, as noted before, uh, all of physics happens on uh, smooth manifolds that represent space. Uh, the prototypical example being R3, Euclidean 3 space. Now, when we go into doing numerical computation, uh, we have to represent R3, this continuous thing in with uh, uh, grid points, which is inherently uh, discrete. So borrowing from the spirit and the language of category theory, there should be a functor that called discretization that goes from R3 to Z3, uh, Z3 representing the uh, three-dimensional grid block of you know, values we want to compute out, um, or you know, where the physics takes place. Then because CUDA, C, and C++, at least for now, uh, for toolkits to 7.5, uh, only works uh, it plays only well with one-dimensional uh, arrays. I think that's because uh, memory addresses are uh, modeled as a contiguous one-dimensional array 
on the device GPU. So you want to go from uh, your three-dimensional grid block or your two-dimensional grid block uh, and flatten that. Uh, and there should be exist some flattened functor that goes from uh, Z3 to Z. And that extends all the way to how um, your grid coordinates should transform uh, under this functor from IX, IY, IZ, and then it should follow a uh, formula uh, with the correct so-called strides. In this case, uh, uh, you know, LX, LXY, um, that represent the number of threads. Uh, and that will give you the global index on this flattened array. Now, following along the spirit of category theory, um, we want to go from uh, physical scalar quantities such as rho, which we um, encountered before, which represents mass density. From mathematical physics, they are C infinity functions, and they have very special uh, algebraic properties. Uh, the functor discretized should preserve these algebraic quantities, uh, and uh, they preserve them in a way that they end up being, in category theory, being Homs from Z3 to R. Flatten should also preserve these algebraic, uh, these algebraic uh, characteristics and properties. Uh, and Homs uh, obey addition at each point and also multiplication, multiplications by scalars. And that, you know, from pure mathematics uh, standpoint, you know, that's what Homs do. And they carry it well uh, with, uh, you know, throughout the, uh, under these functors, discretize and flatten. Now the other uh, mathematical object we really need to consider are uh, sections of vector field, uh, uh, vector bundles, uh, which represent velocity vector fields, momentum flux uh, fields, uh, as such that are needed in fluid mechanics. Um, and then the first two diagrams um, remind us what the definition of vector bundles are. Uh, and then they should, uh, these pro uh, th this definition should carry forward under discretization uh, and flatten. And um, in conclusion, at the end, uh, we end up with uh, a type float three uh, one-dimensional array. Now, uh, I made a big deal about uh, category theory and mathematical physics and representing physical quantities as these very abstract and high-level uh, mathematical objects um, and how there should be a functor mapping uh, these physical uh, objects all the way to uh, what uh, CUDA C, C++ uh, can do to compute them. Um, and I made a deal about this process because um, as a framework, uh, I want something that maps categories into classes in C++, objects in a category into objects in a class, uh, HOMs and functors into class methods or class functions. Uh, and I do that so that we could factor our code in a sane and civilized manner. Uh, also on the left-hand side, of, in terms of mathematical physics, um, how you want to think about it is that uh, space-time or space uh, is manifold, and then we want to think of the category of all possible objects uh, that can exist on space, which include mass density, which is represented as a C-infinity function, uh, C infinity being infinity differentiable, uh, vector bundles which represent uh, vector fields, um, and then added on top of that there should be uh, mappings or homs and functors um, into how it's represented on the computer. Now I'm an advocate of this uh, spirit or this framework uh, because of my experience with SageMap. So I lifted the one-line pitches uh, directly from the SageMap documentation. SageMap is a uh, open source or, uh, alternative for symbolic computation. Um, these are uh, the one-line pitch for this uh, uh, line of software engineering 
uh, from SageMap, except uh, I replaced SageMap, the words with uh, CUDA C and C++. So it is this. One line pitch for a mathematician. C++ and CUDA C++ classes provide a library of interrelated bookshelves with each bookshelf containing algorithms, tests, documentation, or some mathematical facts about the objects of a given category. Groups, manifolds, vector bundles. One line pitch for programmers. Categories in category theory provide a large hierarchy of abstract classes for mathematical objects. To keep it maintainable, the inheritance information between the classes is not hard-coded, but instead reconstructed dynamically from duplication-free semantic information. I'll remark about the CUDA C C++ device GPU memory model, uh, which is this. You start off with the number of threads, total number of threads uh, you want to ultimately compute out. Uh, so that's represented by LX, LY, LZ. So this is a three-dimensional grid block. Uh, then you want to specify the number of threads in each direction in a single block, uh, MX, MY, MZ. Uh, then there is the formula LI plus MI minus 1 divided by MI that equals the number of blocks necessary to compute out all the threads you, uh, you want. Uh, this formula, uh, just because of way of integer arithmetic works, guarantees that you compute out all the threads that you want. Uh, MX, MY, MZ, and NX, uh, MY, NZ uh, in math form uh, correspond in CUDA, C, C++ into block dim dot X, uh, grid dim dot X, dot uh, Y, dot Z, uh, respectively. And they're all instances of dim 3, the type dim 3. Ki equals Ii plus Ji Mi. That's, uh, that's a formula for obtaining the global index in the ith direction of the thread that you know, you're know interested in. Uh, so for instance, um, I rewrote that uh, mathematical formula uh, in CUDA C, C++ uh, code. So that's what that means. Uh, the kicker really is K, because uh, you really want the global index on that one-dimensional uh, memory address array, uh, so uh, of that of that particular thread, and it's given by K, uh, and then the quote-unquote striding to take it from three-dimensional grid block to flatten um, is all encapsulated in this formula. I'll talk briefly about shared memory tiling scheme. So in, within a block, um, say you're, we're, we want to do finite difference uh, method. And uh, we're doing a stencil. So each thread um, is looking out to its adjacent cells, the values there, and then using it to uh, do add and subtract to do finite uh, you know, difference uh, method to approximate our derivative. Now, within a block, some of these uh, these threads are using you know the same value uh, multiple number of times. So instead, what you want to do is load all the values, but within a certain uh, within that block and then some a little bit um, into quote unquote shared memory, so that these threads would pun intended share these values and not have to call global memory all the time. Uh, so if we define big SI to be equal to the dimensions that size of that block MI, I running from X, Y, Z, plus that little bit more 2 times R, uh, so that you can get you know all the boundary cases of our stencil. So if our stencil is size 1, then R is equal to 1. If our stencil size is 2, then R is equal to 2. So for a tile of dimension of big S, X, uh, S, big S, Y, big S, Z, then within that tile, the index in the i direction, i equals X, Y, and Z, is given by that formula. Uh, I, I is really just thread index dot X or dot Y or dot Z plus R. And then to obtain, and then we're going to have to flatten that uh, shared tile uh, just because that's how CUDA works for now. Um, and then we obtain uh, this index in this shared tile uh, that's flattened called S, uh, SK. Uh, 
uh, and SK directly one to one correspond to uh, K, which is the global index on uh, this flattened uh, global memory. Here's a heat equation, and I wanted to use diff finite difference methods for a stencil of size two uh, to um, implement the heat equation in two dimensions and three dimensions. Uh, the thing to note is that the Laplacian, that del uh, triangle thing, uses double derivatives, so uh, it's amenable to finite difference methods. Uh, and then I use on the left hand side for evolving in time the so called uh, Ford Euler um, method. So here I present the two dimensional and three dimensional heat equation by finite difference method. Um, the animations are done with OpenGL with texture graphics in two dimensions. Uh, so again, for the three-dimensional case, it's just going to be a two-dimensional slice of that full block. And um, this is done with uh, stencil size 2. And what I want to emphasize is this. Uh, and again, I want to emphasize that uh, device G uh, this is all completely rendered on a device GPU in real time, uh, not on the CPU. Um, the stencil size is 2. Usually, what I've seen, um, at least what I've seen, please tell me um, if you've seen anything else, is that for implementations of the heat equation, um, it's usually in two dimensions, and usually it's just taking the average of the adjacent values uh, to for adjacent cells, uh, taking the average of those values, summing them up, and then you know getting the temperature in the middle. But the case in this case here, it's using you know finite method uh, difference methods in full generality, and you can go how many stencil sizes that you desire. So here it is um, for two dimensions, and I set up um, I use OpenGL and it has a mouse function pointer a mouse function, so I could put in a heat source wherever I want and move that around. And we immediately see that um, once I remove the heat source and it starts cooling down because I set the uh, boundary conditions as such. Uh, so the heat source is uh, hottest. And then I just set it uh, for some arbitrary scale that it's uh, 212. Uh, the boundary condition below uh, kind of represents ground. And it's set at uh, 0. And it's color blue, so it's really cold. And then there are uh, boundary conditions um, at the top, near the top, uh, that are diagonal, uh, that kind of represents a, um, a chamber. And uh, those are set at 70. And then so we see that um, places where the heat source used to be is cooling down. And um, that heat source. Uh, heat is getting conducted away from the heat source. So this is after the uh, one thousandth iteration. And then we uh, continue to see that heat conduction now and that cooling. Now I'll, um, I decide after the 1400th iteration to move the heat source uh, to, the, to the right. And immediately we start seeing uh, cooling down at where the heat source used to be. Now here is uh, the heat equation that's numerically computed out for a grid block that's in three dimensions. We're only seeing the two-dimensional uh, slice of this grid block. But what I want to emphasize that is, is that CUDA C, C++ is com computing out this uh, three-dimensional grid block in real time. Um, and it's a 480 by 480 by 288 block. Uh, so you multiply that up, it's you know in the hundreds of millions of uh, grid points. And it's doing finite difference uh, method of stencil size 2 on each of the, those grid points. Uh, the animation itself is uh, a little bit slow. So what I did was uh, screenshot uh, my screen. And you can see that you know at uh, forward iterations through uh, 100, 300, 500, uh, where the heat source used to be, 
it's getting colder, heat is getting conducted away. On the left, I wanted to try uh, to uh, do, I, I wanted to try to imagine an inlet condition with uh, a heat, with a high heat source there, and then we see that that heat is spreading out into this uh, cubic chamber. Now the holy grail would be to, you know, do to numerically compute out uh, Euler's equation to whatever order of accuracy we want. Um, and Euler equations are there, you know, the first, second, and third correspond to mass conservation, F equals MA, and energy conservation respectively. Uh, I use the equation of state for a perfect ideal gas uh, in order to have expression for pressure P uh, in terms of rho, uh, what I'll dynamically evolve, three of them, uh, rho, uh, mass density, P, um, uh, 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 vector field P for the uh, momentum flux, epsilon for the energy per unit volume, uh, gamma is the um, heat capacity ratio, so I have this expression for P from the equation state of a perfect ideal gas. From there, I can also express uh, the um, energy per unit volume uh, in terms of the other quantities I know. Uh, this is implemented in convect.cu and convect.h in Euler 2D uh, backslash physlib. Now, I want to present the uh, two-dimensional oil equation animation. Uh, what I did in practice was first, I wanted to make sure that mass conservation uh, convection, that convection according to mass conservation in two and three dimension worked first. And I also um, compute out uh, the en uh, energy uh, density because that's easy to do. Um, Dynamically evolving uh, the velocity vector field was non-trivial, uh, and I may need some help there. Uh, but here are the animations for just that um, convection due to mass conservation, but using finite difference methods in two and three dimensions using OpenGL texture graphics. So here we have that Gaussian ball of gas moving um, you know, down and right in two dimensions. Here we have it. Um, here we have uh, convection in three dimensions, and again, it's moving down and to the right with 25 me uh, meters per second uh, in each of those components, and 12 meters per second in the z direction. So we should see it disappear away from this two-dimensional uh, block slice. Uh, and keep in mind that this is being rendered on a 680 times 680 times three time, uh, 20 three-dimensional block. So it was doing finite difference um, computation to out to stencil size 2 for each of those grid points. Uh, 680 times 680 times 320 is about um, 10 to d8, uh, about 100, uh, 100 million grid points. Uh, so we see it uh, disappear away. Now, for the um, Euler equations, um, what I had trouble with is uh, determining appropriate uh, boundary conditions um, so that um, the stencil, uh, so in the computation, computation of uh, how the velocity vector field uh, changes, um, you want to be getting some uh, division by zeros. So that leads into bleeds into the miscellaneous notes and uh, miscellaneous final remarks that I want to make, uh, which is, I want to work with engineers and to uh, to and to work with others to understand the uh, real world conditions um, and real world properties of um, things we want to model such as um, the combustion chamber for a rocket or even components of a, a rocket engine uh, and to get um, you know the para physical parameters for the inlet conditions or, and boundary conditions uh, so that moving forward I know how you know how to apply uh, these finite different methods and also other 
methods we can explore, finite volume, finite element, was done on uh, the uh, GPU with CUDA CC++. Uh, one important thing I want to remark is that um, in my code, uh, I did my best to employ C++11 and C++14 uh, practices and not to think about C++ before. Because the creator of C++, uh, Bjorn Stroop, he remarked that um, C++11, C++14, uh, 11 and 14 correspond to the years that the, these standards were finally finalized and introduced, uh, 2011 and 2014. He remarked that C++11 is really, really feels like a new language, and I sincerely believe that it really is a new language that just happens to have C++ and C uh, backwards compatibility. So you should really baraxle your mind about you know practices before and try to implement the best practices uh, moving forward of C++11 and C++14. Uh, one of the things that was really novel that I did was to use uh, the C++11 uh, library functional uh, into factoring out um, the code for um, using OpenGL. Because OpenGL is essentially a C API. And people have tried to use C++ to write classes to implement OpenGL. But in practice, what I found, you can copy the exact same uh, C++ class uh, that uh, uses OpenGL, and they won't compile on MVCC. Uh, it just won't because the device doesn't know um, where in the memory address is this uh, C++ class. But what you can do is use functional, and that name is you know, really appropriate, especially if you're a pure, uh, pure mathematician, because it is a mapping of uh, whatever parameters, in, uh, and it spits out a function as opposed to a value. And it does exactly, uh, you know, you need a function to input into uh, OpenGL as a C API, and that, that's what functional uh, does. All my code is available on GitHub, and then it's at Ernest Y Alumni backslash CUDA CFD uh, back um, underscore out. Also, uh, as currently I am seeking out opportunities, which is a euphemism for uh, I am looking for a job in combustion CFD, uh, and I've made a presentation before a one-dimensional combustion CFD that I've implemented for modeling a, a liquid fuel as um, a droplet using Cantera and Python. And then Cantera is a really good library um, for uh, doing you know, all the chemical equilibrium uh, reactions, um, computations uh, for combustion. And then so the vision or the, the glide path that I see is combining this two to three dimensional um, CFD computational fluid dynamics that's done on with CUDA C C++ uh, computed out on the device GPU and um, locally at you know in each thread block doing the combustion um, according to local equilibrium uh, and then we can I can either borrow or refactor the code from Cantera in order to do that um, so yeah thank you and remember, the mission is to Mars because nobody really wants to stay in Jakku.